Hello, hello. God bless, God bless. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God bless. Hello, my name is Joani. I'm a prophet of God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome. All right. I have a structured word for you, and this relates to the eclipse. All right. And last night, I heard um, God say judgment, and it was specifically after the word blood moon. Okay. Um, I have a few sets of scripture. And I'm just going to read them as I wrote them down. So the first one is Isaiah 13, 6. And it says here, the destructive day of the Lord. Howl ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt. And they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed, amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate. And he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth. And the moon shall not cause her light to shine. And I will punish the world for their evil. And the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Therefore, I will shake the heavens and the earth and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger. And it shall be as the chaste roe, and as a sheep that no man taketh up. They shall every man turn to his own people, and flee every one into his own land. Every one that is found shall be thrust through, and every one that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished. Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them, which shall not regard silver. And as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Their bows also shall dash the young men to pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eye shall not spare children. That's a real dark passage. That's a real dark scripture right there. And it was in sync and in line with the word I got before, which was melt and arrows, Jeremiah 1, Jeremiah 9, and Psalm 91. So I'll read those after. But I will read also this one, Blood Moon Judgment, which is Luke sixteen nineteen. Just being obedient to the Holy Spirit. Luke sixteen nineteen says the rich man and the beggar. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. I'm going to break this one down because I've read it before, but I didn't get it till today. There was a certain man, there was a certain rich man, right, which was clothed in purple and fine linen royalty. And lived in luxury every day. On the contrast, on the contrary, Continuing, and there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. Let me 
fix my bookmark. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And I thought about that. What a sin. He desired to be fed. He didn't desire to be fed with the word of God. He didn't desire to be fed with that. He desired to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. I thought that was sin. Continuing. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by angels into Abraham's bosom. One of my followers, who is also an angel, wrote it in one of, the, one of her comments, and it stood out. And I, I was sitting on that word for so long, and then finally it came up again. I said, all right, this is where you were leading me, Lord. So thank you, angel. And the angels carried that man, right? And was carried by angels into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. He saw Abraham, he saw Abraham, and he saw Lazarus basically behind him. And I'm thinking, are both of these guys in hell? Are both of these guys in hell? We're going to continue. And he cried, right? This rich man. And he cried and said, Father Abraham. Make a distinction. That's not Father, Creator of heaven and earth. That's Father Abraham, right? And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame that's how hot hell is hell is so hot you're gonna be so thirsty that you're even you're gonna beg the person that you despise even for a drip of water and somewhere Somewhere in Revelation, it states that, I don't know if it's in Revelation, forgive me, that water, water will be like a, water will be, it'll be like a, like, it'll be so scarce and rare. That That's how precious water will be. And it'll only be given to God's people. So he begs, even just for a, 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 a tip just a drop of water look at that that he may dip the tip of his finger just just the tip of his finger in the water and cool my tongue because that's how hot hell is but abraham said son look at that he even called him son son remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things this rich man receiveth thy good things and likewise, Lazarus, Lazarus, evil things. But now he is comforted and thou art tormented. So don't think that your suffering is for nothing. Don't think that your torment here on earth is for nothing. You paid it here so that you don't have to pay it somewhere else. And beside all this. This is what Abraham says. And beside all this, between us and you, right? So he's he's down there. He's 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 in I, I swear he's like he's like either near the gates of hell, he's by hell, he says us, right? Abraham says, me and Lazarus, and then you. And beside all this, between us and you, so there's a space, there is a great gulf fixed. So that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. This is a very clear distinction of the levels of hell. You didn't go that deep into hell. They went past you. But you also cannot cross over to this side. 
neither us cross over to you. Then he said, this is what the rich man says. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren. This is a rich man pleading. This is, his, this, is his, this is him in hell pleading. For I have five brothers. Send him. I have five brothers that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. What was Jesus Christ? A prophet. What am I? A prophet. Let them hear. And the rich man, right? And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. Hmm. And he said unto him, this is what Abraham said, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, Neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Do you not understand? This is a faith thing. You can't, you, this is a faith thing. You're going to heaven or you're going to hell. You have been warned by Moses who gave you the Ten Commandments and some and the prophets. And if you don't want to listen to the prophets, you're not going to listen to anyone else. If you're not going to listen to the preacher, you're not going to listen to anyone else. If you're not going to listen to Jesus Christ, these are literally the words Jesus is speaking this. You're not going to listen to anyone else. That's that scripture. Now, Remember that this word is called blood moon judgment, all right? Blood moon judgment. The next scripture is Jeremiah 9, 1. Jeremiah 9, 1 through 9, specifically 1 through 9. And it's called an assembly of treacherous men. So here it is. Oh, that my head were, were waters and mine eyes a fountain of tears, that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. I had to break this down for someone earlier. Oh, that my head were waters and my eyes a fountain of tears. This is weeping. This is sadness. That I might weep day and night. My heart breaks for the slain daughter of my people. Who hurt you? Who hurt you? Who cut you down? Oh, that I had in the wilderness a lodging place of wafering men, that I might leave my people and go from them, for they be all adulterers and assembly of treacherous men. You had to leave the place you were at. You had to leave whatever place you were at. You were in a season of wilderness. Oh, that I had in the wilderness a lodging place. You had a place in the wilderness. The wilderness is not a place of, of fruitfulness, really. It's exactly that, a wilderness. So while you were low, someone kicked you while you were low. And look at that. What do you do? That I might leave my people. You are supposed to be my people. You're supposed to look after me. That I might leave my people and go from them. Guess what? For they be all adulterers. You know why they're adulterers? Because... They proved that they don't serve the living God. They proved that they don't serve the one true God. They proved that they serve Satan. That is their God. An assembly of treacherous men. Continuing. And they bend their tongues like their bows for lies. Right? What do we know Satan as? The father of lies. And they bend their tongues like their bow for lies. But they are not valiant for the truth upon the earth. For they proceed from evil to evil. And they know not me, says the Lord. He sees them. I don't know who's lying on you, but he sees them. 
Take ye heed, every one, of his neighbor, and trust ye not any brother, for every brother will utterly supplant, and every neighbor will walk with slanders. Put your trust in God. Put your trust in God. You know, it was it was funny because when we were studying this word, we were talking about the fake nice. The people who go to check up on you just to see how you're surviving the mess they put you in. Hey, how you doing? I just want to see how you're doing. They make it sound so innocent. Trust them not. They will supplant. You have to put your trust in God. So continuing. Because it, you're, 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 this person walks with slander. Continuing. And they will deceive everyone his neighbor. And will not speak the truth. And they have taught their tongue to speak lies. And weary themselves to commit iniquity. I'm going to say this. It says, and they will deceive everyone his neighbor and will not speak the truth. Understand that I'm facing such a demon. In my life as a chosen one. That's a demon I'm assigned. Every time this person lies. I could have proof. In my hand. I could I could have video. I can have all the facts straight. It's the deceiver. And they will deceive everyone his neighbor. Every time. That someone comes in contact with this person. Despite me having the proof. Despite me having. Having everything in line. To properly vindicate myself. There's this evil. There's this deception in the air. Everyone. They're all deceived. I was like, God, how can this be? This is demonic as fuck. It's not. It not only is it not fair, but Lord, this is demonic. This is demonic. And I pray against it all the time. All the time. And you're doing nothing about it. Not after the eclipse. Mm-mm. -mm. So I understand that the Lord was speaking to me as well. And they will deceive. He's, he's telling my situation. I see it. They're deceiving everyone, his neighbor. This person will not speak. It says, and will not speak the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies and weary themselves to commit iniquity. Okay. I'm going to continue. Thine habitation is in the midst of deceit. Through deceit, they refuse to know me, saith the Lord. Here's a very, 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 very real thing about this. This person deems themselves as holy. This person has no problem. Remember that Satan doesn't have a problem. Um, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Turn this bread into stone. Turn this stone into bread. I caught you. He's not afraid to say it. You have to understand that that this person, habitate, thine habitation, is in the midst of deceit. Through deceit, they refuse to know me, saith the Lord. They refuse. They refuse. This is this is. You have to understand. It's one thing. This is non-compliant. This this person just outright does does not care to be involved with God. Does not care to do the right thing. This person does not care to tell the truth. This person enjoys deceiving others because they feel like they're in control. I don't know who this is for. There's there's someone. If this is, if this is part of your story. That you're in contact with such a narcissist, right? The narcissists believe their own lies. They have taught their tongues to lie. Even when you have proof. Even even if if you have literally a video of them, they will literally say, sorry, that's that's not that's not me. Dude, it's you. No, that's my twin. No, it's like it's per it's like multi-personality disorder. And when they get caught, they don't they they can't fault to it. 
And through deceit, they refuse to know me, says the Lord. Therefore, therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts. What does God say about all of this? Finally, I get, finally, you know, so many prayers. I finally get a response from God. Behold, this is what the, this is what God says. Behold, I will melt them and try them. For how shall I do for the daughter of my people? Remember the word melt was also in Isaiah 13, 6, which I read. That's what the Lord says. Behold, I will melt them and try them. For how shall I do for the daughter of my people? Their tongue is as an arrow shot out. It speaketh deceit. One speaketh peaceably to his neighbor with his mouth, but in his heart he layeth his weight. That's what I said, that fake nice. That fake nice. Their tongue is an arrow shot out. They already shot their arrows. They already came shots fired. They've already spoken deceit. It speaketh deceit. One speaketh peaceably to his neighbor with his mouth. Yeah, how are you? How you doing? Oh, no, no, I, I, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, I, I, I think I can be concerned too. They don't give a... But in his heart, he layeth his weight waiting melt let me go back to isaiah 13 6 13 6 where it says here that the lord's gonna melt them Let's see if i can find it real quick bear with me here No. Oh, it says, therefore shall, shall all hands be faint and every man's heart shall melt. And this is the destructive day of the Lord. How ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt. And they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall melt. They shall melt. They shall melt. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. When the Lord said it again, behold, I will melt them and try them. Now, after this, oh, did I finish it? Oh, the last part of, of Jeremiah 9, 9, 1 through 9. So the Lord says, um, but in his heart layeth his weight, right? The deceit. The last verse here says, shall I not visit them for these things, saith the Lord? Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? That's what, that's what the Lord says. Shall I, shall I not visit them for these things, says the Lord? Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? God's going to do it. God's going to do it. Now, after this was Psalm 91, right? Protection prayer. The protection prayer is the secret place of the Most High. So here it goes. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Right? Do not trust in your brother. You trust in God. Hallelujah. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers. And under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. His truth. God's truth. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day. Do not be afraid. 
Do not be afraid of the arrows that this person is throwing against you. All the lies they are speaking about you during the day because at nighttime they are plotting. They are plotting to devise another lie. They are plotting to see what they can say. They are plotting to see what they can do. You have to understand that sometimes when God takes you away from someone, it's because he's protecting you. Thou shalt not be afraid, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Really, God? You're not going to have to say nothing. You're going to see. You're going to finally see. Because thou has made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. Look at the difference. You made the Lord thy habitation. What did they make their habitation? Lies. Deceit. Deceit is their habitation. I, it could, I swear, it couldn't have been crazier to receive all of this. There shall no evil befall thee. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear up thee in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and shew him my salvation. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, initially, this was a, a tough word, blood moon, right? We have we have this eclipse coming in. We have this eclipse coming in. I swear, I, I, I don't know if this, that's why I'm here. I don't know if, if that's why God pulled me to this location just in time to, to be here for, for the eclipse. But I know that it's supposed to... We're supposed to, it, it's exactly what scripture says, right? The sun will be darkness. And it's so funny because it, at the location that God has me, totality, the totality of the eclipse is at what time? 144, the angel number. The angel number. 144, the angel number. Wow. You have to understand, right? The eclipse is going to pass through certain locations at certain times. What are the chances that I'm a prophet of God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? I've never been to Texas in my life, but the location that I am in says that we will be in totality at 144. It's not a coincidence. Now, because it is such a strong word of destruction, enemies, hell, melting, arrows, evil, ignorance, and the Lord says, it's God's judgment. It's God's judgment. It will cease. It will cease. And I'm going to tell you something about, about all of this. Do I think that when the eclipse happens that the whole world's going to burn and all of that. Not necessarily. Just how I said, there is this demonic force of deception. There's this demonic force of deception that is plaguing my life. I feel like that's truly what's bound to happen. That that moment that the 144 totality hits, there will be a conversion awakening that the devil's time is up hallelujah 
Now, these are very strong words. And I said, God, are you, are you sure? Even though everything's in line. God, are you sure? And then he left off. He, he is more than sure. And it says here, he gave me Isaiah 42, 13. And it says God's judgment. The judgment of God. And what, what did I hear? Blood, moon, and judgment. Blood, moon, and judgment. So let's read it. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, ye roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. God's going to do something. I have long time hold in my peace. I have been still and refrained myself. Now will I cry like a travailing woman. I will destroy and devour at once. What did the what does the scripture say? Oh my gosh. It says here uh in Isaiah 13 6, the one he initially gave me, he said, Um, they shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth, like a woman that's in, in, in birth. And what does the scripture God are you sure? I, he says, I boom, Holy Spirit just came in and it was like magnified. The judgment of God. I have long time holding my peace. That's what God says. I have been still and refrained myself. Now will I cry like a travail, a travailing woman. I will destroy and devour at once. I will make waste mountains and hills and dry up all their herbs. And I will make the rivers islands and I will dry up the pools. And I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. I will lead them in paths that they they not known. I will make darkness light before them. What did I say? The eclipse. I will make. The, that's what the Lord says. I will make darkness light before them. And crooked things straight. I didn't have to read anything else. I thought, you know what God? That's the final word you're saying. How many times do I have to tell you? You're a prophet. This word shall come to pass in Jesus name. You can hear me. Warn them. I am done. That's what God said. These things will I do unto them. And not forsake them. And they shall be turned back. They shall be greatly ashamed. That trust in graven images. That say to molten images. Ye are our gods. Hear ye deaf. And look ye blind. That ye may see. Who is blind but my servant, or deaf as my messenger that I sent? Who is blind as he that is perfect, and blind as the Lord's servant? Seeing many things, but thou observest not. Opening the ears, but he heareth not. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness, for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes. They are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey, and none delivereth, for a spoil, and none saith, Restore. Who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? Who gave Jacob for a spoil, and Israel to the robbers? Did not the Lord, he against whom he who have sinned, for they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his law. Therefore, he hath poured upon him. Oh my God, I haven't even read this yet. And I bookmarked it and I wasn't sure. Therefore, he hath poured upon him the fury. He has poured upon him the fury of his anger and the strength of battle. And it has set him on fire round about. Yet. He knew not, and it burned him, yet he laid it not to heart. Pouring, the pouring, the pouring, the pouring. That's revelation. Oh my, I bookmarked it, but I wasn't sure. I was, I, Holy Spirit, are you sure? And it's the pouring of the vial. Number, is it? Is it the fifth vial? Yes. Yes, the fifth vial. Even maybe even the fourth. 
But let's go with the fifth because that was the one that, that I kept, that Holy Spirit kept giving me. And the fifth angel, this is Revelation 16, 10. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast and his kingdom was full of darkness. What do we expect to happen? A moment of total darkness. At what time? At 144. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast and his kingdom was full of darkness and they gnawed their tongues for pain and blaspheme the God of heaven because their pains and their sores, guess what? And their sores, just like the, just like the rich man in Lazarus, who was a beggar and was covered in sores and repented not of their deeds. Wow. 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 It came full circle. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The fifth vial. I want to read that one more time. That was the last one he gave me. And it says here. Therefore, he hath poured upon him the fury of his anger poured out the vial he poured out the vial he poured out the vial the seven vials of God go it says here and I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven to, to the seven angels go your ways and pour out the vials of of the wrath of God upon the earth the wrath of God, his anger. Therefore, he hath poured upon him the fury of his anger. To continue. And it has set him on fire round about. Hell. You know what's so funny? The fifth, the fifth, that was the fifth one. The fourth vial says and the angel poured out his vial upon the sun and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire it has has set him on fire round about yet he knew not and it burned him and what does it say here the fourth vial right where the bookmark is and scorched men with fire and men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. Yet they laid it not to heart. They repented not. They still repented not. They're going to be in hell and they still repent. It's going to be too late. It's going to be too late. That's what God is saying. Even, even me preaching the word now, saying the final hour has come. 144 total totality totality 144 and i really i really feel in my in my spirit if it comes to be physical oh lord take me up to heaven please let me be at your right hand side please i have done i've done the work which you has gave us me to do lord i have i have submitted my life to you in all ways and i i mean i wasn't perfect at it but like you know i gave it my all when I had nothing, when I had everything, I gave it my all. Do I really feel it's going to be physical? I don't think so. But in the event that it is, you have to cover yourself with the blood of Christ. I cover you with the blood of Christ. Amen. But I really feel that there's going to be a, a shift. There's going to be a shift. There's going to be a shift in. Remember, this is a spiritual thing. This is a spiritual, spiritual, spiritual thing. God has had it. And I was wondering, why do I have to wait so long for God to come through? Why do I have to wait for long, so long for God's vengeance? God, why, why is this happening? God gave them so much time. 
He said, I have held my peace. And at 144, when totality strikes, that's when God will strike. They will melt. Whether that, that's because the realization will come into play, that the deception will be gone, and they will be held accountable. You have to understand, oh, do I say it? No, I'm not going to say it. Play this word back, blood moon, judgment. What a full circle word. Holy Spirit, wow, wow, wow. I love you. God bless you. Um, all right, bye-bye. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.